What's up everybody? It's Russ with rwgresearch.com, quantumgravityresearch.org. So this video today is, uh, it has to do with uh, Stanley Myers project and it actually has to do with a pulse generator that I have been using lately. Um, this pulse generator was uh, created by a gentleman named Gunther and he is from Germany. He's been working on a program and a piece of hardware that actually are going to be used in the um, tuning of a VIC slash um, coil capacitor resonant type system where you need to be able to fine tune everything. Um, you can do that with this software. So I'm currently going to just promote this software because it, it does do what it's designed to do. Um, Gunther has spent a lot of time and effort on it um, as a full-time project and so not very many people know about it so I thought I'd help him out um, and he helped me out in other ways so we're just kind of sharing the um, positive things here um, so let's go ahead and get started I'm going to show you the functionality of this I'm going to kind of show you um, what it can do but I'm not going to go into great detail it can do very very complex detailed things so this is a software based and hardware based application um, I'll get you a better view of this but currently I have the PGen is what it's called I have the software pulled up and uh, this is kind of just a generic overview of what the four channel looks like it is a four channel So I'll get you a better overview of that. That's the software side of things. Um, the hardware side of things, um, basically you have this controller board right here that has your four channels on it. And the major component on this entire board is this microprocessor. Now this microcontroller right here, you can actually purchase for about $49. Um, I found it for $45 with a 5% discount um, lately here. Um, I believe it was 5% but anyway um, so you can get just this chip and then all you need to purchase is the software here um, which is really reasonable um, and there's actually a little bit of a trick I'll tell you guys in just a minute but let's go through the hardware so here's the hardware um, this is his design the circuit board here his design and then he's just incorporated where you can plug in the microcontroller so you don't have to have the circuit board but this is what you can purchase from him if you would like to otherwise you can you can literally just get the controller here and build your own circuit which actually you don't really need any functionality on this circuit board the only thing you actually need is a switch okay so let me remove the oscilloscope leader so it looks like a bit of a mess but um, just because I've got my wires all connected or ready to go for testing for you guys basically you have power input right here and then you can put in AC or DC it's got a built-in rectifier for this switch little uh, DC bus and then this is an opto isolator which is what um, the microcontroller is driving is this opto isolator so everything on this side of the circuit is isolated so you do not destroy your um, circuit board over there and the controller um, this is a MOSFET driver running a MOSFET and this is a, um, a diode to protect the circuitry from the back EMF spikes coming off the primary here in this particular setup. Um, in this particular setup I'm going to be demonstrating just a regular air capacitor and a set of coils here which is what I have. Um, these are just coils inside of, the, uh, inside of these housings here. So there's two coils, a primary and a secondary if you want to call it that and then two, uh, two chokes if you want to call it that. And I'm just using this as an example for this demonstration. So this does have uh, phase lock loop compatibility and functionality built into the software and if you wanted to do phase lock loop you're going to have to add a uh, I believe this is an op amp and so you're going to have to add that into your integrated circuit if you don't purchase this circuit board. Now the circuit board is actually kind of nice um, you can buy a revision that will do LCD and so you don't have to have a PC at all you can actually do everything through the LCD from my understanding and then again this has a a bridge rectifier built into it so you can do um, AC or DC input has a uh, has a I believe that's a 5 amp regulator on the bottom and that drives the circuit board and receives power 
um, for everything. Now this is a uh, USB plugged into my computer over here which is how I'm controlling this thing. So this is the circuit board, this is the switch, the driver portion of the circuit. I'm using a benchtop power supply for this demonstration. And um, so yeah, so let's get started. I just want to show you some functionality of this of this circuit, or I'm sorry, of this, uh, not circuit, but uh, this uh, software and hardware combination. Um, so one of the major important things about this is the fine detailed tuning that you can do. And it's very important that you can do that um, and tune in a system like this. And so I'm helping him promote this because it's very, very um, entry level prices here. And look in the description. Um, and oh, the little trick that I was going to tell you guys is if you are part of the open dash source dash um, open dash source dash energy dot org um, uh, forums, if you're a part of that forums, you can actually get a small discount. Um, so if you participate there, um, just look in the description for more information. So let's get started on the detailed um, kind of overview or brief description of what all is going on here. So let me get that set up. Alrighty, so currently I have the PGen software pulled up, as you can see right here. Um, we are currently actually going to be using channel 1. So basically you have the, if you look up here in the top row, you see you'll have the pulse frequency, the duty percent, the microseconds, um, the microseconds, and this is the increment column, which I'll explain, and the repetition column, which I can explain. Um, so we're going to be using channel 1, so right now I have it set at 200 or 2000 hertz at 50% duty cycle. The on time and off time is equal because of the duty cycle being 50%. The increment, what this increment actually does is allow you to, um, well you can see the plus and minus buttons here. Um, so an increment of 1, if I hit 1, you can see it changes to a value of 1. And then if I go back down, you can see it changes to value of that one. If I put in 10, now this increments in that amount. Okay, so that's what increment actually means. So, which is a nice functionality when you're trying to find resonance of a system or create um, some sort of a sweep function. Um, so, we're going to, okay, and then repetition, um, which I'll show you in a minute, has to do with when you use gating. So this is channel one. This first column is the first, um, again, this is a pulse train um, creating software. So the second um, column would be the second portion of your pulse train, third portion of your pulse train, and then so forth and so on down the line here. Um, so the different boxes that are grayed out, um, some of these things have to do with when you use multiple channels. I'm not going to get too much into multiple channels. I'm just going to give you a brief overview of this. So um, this is the start and stop for your pulse. Um, the increment here, this is actually uh, the update. So what it, what it actually does is it immediately updates the output for your um, for your pulses so if I check this box as I change this it changes live okay um, master here this master makes this channel the master channel so if I click down here to a second channel and I click um, let's see master okay and then I click this bound right here see there it says bound now, if I change, and I need to update automatically, and I need to do feedback. Okay, so if I have the option selected as I do, you can see as I change channel one, channel two changes with it. So they're they're bound together by this master, and this allows you to change multiple um, functionalities of different channels at the same time. Okay, so this is called um, frequency bound right here. All right, as you can see in this, in this uh, overview, um, I have the oscilloscope, I have the one channel of the frequency generator, and I just have a desktop overview here, which is very important, but it's there. Um, so currently, I have my voltage uh, on my power supply set at 
about two volts. And let me hook up the oscilloscope to the switch. All right, so it's set it right at two volts, just over two volts right now. And uh, basically, I'm going to turn on the pulse generator by hitting this start button. All right, and this is what my pulse output looks like. Now, the yellow trace is actually across the capacitor on my LC series circuit. Okay, so you can see here, if I put an increment of 10, then my frequency is going to change by 10 and now you can see it's not changing automatically that's because I did not check this box so I have to check this box now it will change live all right so you can see what my waveform looks like as I click this now one of the cool functionalities of this um, which which was recently added and um, that's this sweep function so this is time in, in uh, uh, microseconds, I believe, or seconds, actually. So 0.1 is going to be the fastest we can do in this particular instance. And if we leave 10 in here, whatever the last portion I click that's yellow right here, if I hit sweep, it will automatically sweep through the functionality of this thing. Um, that's extremely hand handy when you're trying to find resonance of a system. Okay, so let me double check the scope scope set here. Okay. All right, so the blue that you see there is actually the output, um, and it is accurate. So if I change this to um, 2,000, then there you go, we're at 2,000. So if I change the duty cycle, okay, I can change the duty cycle. Again, I still have 10 in the increment, so the increment changes by 10. Okay, so let's put it back at 50. Now, really quickly, um, I'm just going to put this at 50 increment, and I'm going to very quickly sweep through here. You can actually saw the little resonance peak there. All right, so. There's your, you see your resonance as you went by it. So the sweep functions allow, allows you to find that. Now if I hit the negative here and hit sweep again, then it's going to sweep back down into that, into that resonance. So once I, once I get close, okay, I stop the sweep by hitting the <coughs> little arrow. I'm going to change this to about 10. <coughs> Excuse me, I want to change my scope setting and a matter of fact look at that it's off the charts I'm gonna bring my I'm gonna bring my voltage down to about two volts or one volt I mean so I can actually see the oscilloscope so there you can see what kind of voltage potential I'm getting out of that so bringing this increment back down to one I can really find the really fine-tune in that that resonance point okay and I can even do that fun function sweep with an increment of one and really get into where I'm looking all right so we'll say it's approximately right around this this point here um, so you can see I'm actually only putting in 1.1 volts at two at 20 milliamps um, actually slightly less and I'm getting out 644 volts. So the idea behind this is to tune that in. Now, one of the important functions is being able to create a pulse train with gating in it. Um, so what I've got here is I've got a trace. And I'm going to turn down the voltage even more just so we can move this trace down. So what I've got here is an external trigger setup which is actually a functionality of the software-hardware combination. So I'm going to collect, uh, click external trigger, and this will allow me to trigger, ex trigger externally, because when I do a pulse train, it can be very difficult, um, actually, to make this work right. So I'm going to leave it at the resonant frequency, <clears throat> and I'm going to do a pulse train of 2,000 hertz. Now let me zoom out here I should probably go a lot less like 200 Hertz there we go so 
I'm going to actually leave this zoomed out so you can see it, but I'm going to zoom in. Oh, it's not going to work, right? Okay, well, you can see <clears throat> what's happening here. Um, you can see that my blue, my blue trace is, again, my, my pulse output. Okay? And my pulse output... Uh, I got my... Hold on. There we go. You can see what hap what's happening to my pulse output. Um, it is now only pulsing once. So it's pulsing at this frequency, um, as you can see on the blue trace. If I go over here to repetition and I add some, now you can see I'm actually adding okay, pulses to the pulse train. Okay. Then if I come back down here to the second portion of my box here, and let me do an increment of let's say 10 so we can really see what's going on. Okay, now I'm spreading spreading that out. I'm changing the frequency of the gating. That's what I'm doing. Okay. And then you can also do big increments here where it spreads it way out. Or you can do um, the repetition increment. Or I should just say repetition. Which is basically how many pulses. Now if I wanted to create yet another function, we could go with um, 200 here. Now I'm actually, I'm building that pulse train. Okay, so that that is how you build pulse trains in this system. And we'll just put this at 2. And we can even change the frequency up to like Let's go 2,000. All right, and then we're going to use this pulse train at 400. Now you can see I'm changing the duty cycle here and really, really disrupting what's going on. You can, oops, there goes my background. I got a bunch of bad reflections. Set that back up here. So there we go. So you can see now if I if I change the amount of repetitions uh, and let me put this at one increment of one. Okay, and now you can see I'm adding the pulses at this other frequency. And let's say I want to add some more pulses, and that's even a smaller increment. So let's go with like uh, let's go with like twelve hundred. There you go. So you can see what you're doing here. You're creating that pulse train, and it, and if you you literally can design and build in uh, many different functionalities here. So if you if you wanted your system to do a special output function as a train like this, then that's how you'd set this up. Now, we usually don't use three three channels. Um, we usually only use a setup such as this. For a pulse train functionality that we are that we are looking for. Okay, so you can see here I'm creating this this pulse train, and then I can really I can really tune in. You know, well, how much do I want on gating? How much do I want on um, on the pul the actual pulse frequency? And there you can see that I'm step charging, if you will, the capacitor and then allowing it to relax, which is what we're trying to do in a Stanley Meyer system. So um, this, is, this is just a brief, very brief overview, overview. And again, it does have the phase lock loop functionality built into it. So you can actually um, just hook that right up to your system and hook up feedback into the, uh, the microcontroller. And off you go with phase lock looping. All right, guys, so that's kind of just a really quick brief overview. There's lots more functionalities to this that I'll add uh, in text at the end of this video. But uh, I've, I've done a little research, and to build yourself a uh, pulse generator using circuitry, standard IC circuitry, which I've done myself, 
Um, to do that and create the same effect as what you can see here only on a two channel so only being able to do a gating and an on time um, you're going to spend the equivalent amount of money on a precision type of in, uh, type of uh, homemade circuit which mine uh, the one I built was very very consistent you could really tune stuff in and if you're just going to sit down and calculate cost uh, the equivalent of building that versus um, purchasing the software and the um, the microcontroller and then building yourself a little switch like this it's actually cheaper um, to get to get that precision out of it um, now you can build a very generic simple circuit that you, you just can't fine tune and it's very very difficult to use such a such a circuit so the equivalent um, if you're just looking at price the cost of this thing is actually very very well worth its money it's not that expensive um, check the description in case the price changes I'm not going to mention it in this video but again you do get a discount if you're a part of the uh, open-source-energy.com community there so look in the description for more information and do a little, little do a little homework do a little research but uh, honestly if you are trying to um, tune in and build a system such as such as what I'm doing behind me here um, this is extremely um, useful and it has been very helpful for me thus far really has allowed me to do some uh, minute um, tuning to get uh, the results that I'm looking for. Alright, peace out guys, have a good day. Um, that's it. See ya. Bye.